welcome to Asbury Free Methodist Church in Perth, Ontario, the online edition. Thanks for joining with us. Our goal is to help you come into a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, so that you can become all that you are created to be. And now, here's our pastor, Brent Russell. Hello and welcome to Asbury Online. My name is Brent Russett and I'm the pastor here in beautiful Perth, Ontario. And I'm glad that you've cho chosen to join us today. Our hope is that by spending time together that you will come to know Jesus better. Well, today is part two in the series uh, called the I Am's of Jesus. In the book of John, uh, Jesus had seven I Am statements. And today we're going to look at the second one, John chapter 8, verse 12. And here's what Jesus says. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now there's a lot going on here, and I believe that if you can see what's going on here, it's going to help you to, to follow Jesus. It's going to help you to know Jesus. It's going to help you in your spiritual journey. So, so let me give you some background. If we were to skip ahead to, to John chapter 8, verse 20, it would tell us where Jesus said this. It says, He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. It tells us in the, in the previous chapter that when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, it was the end of the Festival of Tabernacles. Now, now the Festival of Tabernacles celebrated how God had led the Hebrew people out of slavery, slavery in Egypt through the wilderness to the Promised Land. And the way that he led them was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now, every evening during the Festival of Tabernacles, near where Jesus was teaching, they, were, they would light these huge candles. Uh, these candles were intended to remind God's people how God had had led them through the wilderness with a pillar of fire at night. Can you imagine traveling through the wilderness? It's nighttime, but light's not an issue. It's, it's only an issue if you've stepped away from where God was leading you. It wasn't like God led them with a laser beam. It was a pillar of fire, and they had lots of room to roam, but they could roam outside into the darkness. And when, when, you had, when the light moved and when the pillar of fire moved, that was the indication that they needed to move. And while they were walking in that light, they were in God's will and, and they were going where God was leading. They had light. So Jesus is teaching in the temple courts at the end of the Festival of Tabernacles, standing in the vicinity of these giant candles, representing that great pillar of fire, and he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will, will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Can you see what, what's going on here? Jesus is saying that if you want to walk in God's way, if you want to go to where God is taking you, if, if you want to see and, and understand and walk in God's will, then you need to follow me because I am the light. I'm the light of the world. This world is filled with spiritual darkness, but I'm the light of the world. I will take you from spiritual darkness into spiritual light because I am the light of the world. I will take you from spiritual slavery into spiritual freedom because I am the light of the world. I will take you uh, from where you are into the promised land. I will lead you there because I am the light of the world. Just like the Father led you in the wilderness, uh, I'm going to lead you in this dark world and you will have uh, never to walk in darkness again because I am the light of the world. You see what Jesus is saying? He's saying, you'll follow me and I'll see you through. But there's more going on here. It's, it's not just about guidance. Look at how Jesus describes the light. Again, verse 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The light of life. That's how he describes the, the light. It's the light of life. Now this, this idea of light and life is a big theme running throughout the whole book of John. 
Uh, John, uh, speaking of Jesus, says, just as he opens up the book in John chapter 1, verse 4, it says, In him, in Jesus, was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness could not overcome it. Uh, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness testifying concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was, was not the light. He came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. John says right at the beginning, Jesus is that light. And in him was life, and that life was, was the way that he was going to light up all, all of humanity. There's that connection with light and life. The way to life is by walking in the light. In him was life, and that life, light, life was the light of, of mankind. In Jesus was life, and that light's the way. In that light, Jesus points to life. So when Jesus comes along and says, I am the light of the world, he is saying that he promises to, to take us from where we are, spiritually dead, and, and walk us into life, real life abundant life, true life, eternal life. He's saying, I, I, I am the pillar of fire that will lead you through the wilderness of this world to a place that, well, that's flowing with milk and honey, a place in your soul that's overflowing, a place that is abundant, a place where your, where your life, where your soul, where your spirit flourishes. That's where I'm taking you. I'm going to come and I'm going to quench your thirst. I'm going to be the one who is going to feed you. But I want you to know this. I'm leading you into the life that is truly life. Now, now note how we, we walk into the light. How we experience the, the life that God wants us. Remember, he says, when Jesus spoke these things again, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but we'll have the light of life. Whoever follows me, you, you may remember a, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about Jesus being the bread of life. Here's what it says in, in John chapter 6, verse 35, that passage we looked at the, um, that, that first week. It says that Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hung hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. When he, when he was talking about spiritual hunger and spiritual thirst, he said, what you have to do to have your hunger satisfied and your thirst quenched is, is you need to come to me and you need to believe in me. But he says, if you're going to experience life and light, if you're going to see your soul flourish, if you're going to really come to life on the inside, then what you need to do is do more than just believe. It, you need to follow. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. You will have the life that is really life as you follow Jesus. See, believing in Jesus is really important. However, that, that kind of belief always calls us to action, to get up and to follow where Jesus is leading. One of the things I really care about is discipleship. What are we doing at Asbury to develop disciples? And so in, in order to answer that question, I, I, I read a lot of, of discipleship material, and I look at a lot of discipleship methods. And uh, as I read them, you know, many of these Bible studies are fantastic. They give us great information. Um, and they, they, they give us just wonderful insight into the Word of God. But the mistake that is often made is... To assume that, that when we know the right things, that we will do the right things. But my experience does not follow that. I'm sure yours doesn't either. You know, we can know that prayer is good, but do we pray? We can, we can know that it's uh, um, good to, to love our neighbor, but do we love our neighbor? See, knowing and doing are often two different things. So um, we're called to follow Jesus. Dallas Willard says, authentic transformation is possible if we are willing to do one thing 
and that is to arrange our lives around the kind of practices and life Jesus led, to be constantly receiving power and love from the Father. We're arranging our life around him. We're following him. In order to walk in the light, we have to follow Jesus. In order to experience life, we have to practice what Jesus taught. It's not good enough just to assent to the right mental, uh, uh, right, right truths. Say, okay, I believe that's true, and I believe that's true, and I believe that's true. Just like the pillar of cloud, when it started to move, the people of Israel had to pack up their things, and they had to move with the cloud, or, or move with the pillar of fire, or the cloud, because it was in the moving that they stayed in God's will. It was in the following that they were in the light. And you too, it's in the following that you will experience and walk in the light that Jesus has for you. In order to experience a life that is really life, we're called to practice the teachings of Jesus. Not just believe what he said, but we believe it enough to base our life on it and put it into practice. See, following Jesus is an action. But he says, if you follow me, you'll never walk in darkness. But you will have the, the, the light that, that is, is, is life. You'll notice the action that Jesus called to is, calls us to is not religious action. The call to follow Jesus is about him and his ways and his kingdom. And he says, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He calls us to, to walk in, in uh, his ways as we deal with people, as we love people. He calls us to walk in the light as he's shown us how to treat people. He calls us, most importantly, to connect with him, to, to get our nourishment from our soul from him. And just like Jesus, after a busy day, would go into a, a quiet place and he would pray, he calls us to emulate him. Just as Jesus had compassions on people, he calls us to have compassion as well. He calls us to be like him. The way to walk into life that is truly life is to follow Jesus. Uh, and, and here's what happens. When you follow Jesus, when you walk in the light, when you practice his way, you become like yourself. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 14 that to his disciples, you are the light of the world. As you walk in the light, you become light. People see a way to go, a way to follow in Jesus' footsteps. My, my prayer today is that you would pray a prayer commitment. Lord, I, I want my soul to be fully alive. So I want to follow your ways. Teach me what that means right now. What does it mean for me this week to follow your ways? What is it that you want me to focus on in this week uh, that I can... I can follow you and walk, walk in the light. As you start to pray a prayer like that, God has a way of showing you and leading you and guiding you. And as the, the pillar of fire leads you through a dark world, you will see where God is taking you. Sometimes they'll say, okay, right now all you need to do is stand. Just stay in place. I'm hovering right here. I'm with you. And then sometimes he'll lead you into a new thing. And then as you follow him, you yourself are going to become light. I want you to, to just uh, listen to this video clip and, and just have a sense of, of what God is uh, saying about who we are and who he is. In the beginning, darkness covered the earth. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. The true light, which gives light to everyone, came into the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. It is a light for the lost, the searching and the seeking. A light for the darkest valley. A light to drive out fear, even in the shadow of death. When we believe in the light, 
We become children of the light. It shines in us, through us. If we walk in the light, if we let it shine before others, we become a city on a hill, the light of the world. When we let his word light our path, others will follow. We become a beacon of hope to a world in darkness. Our lives reflect the glory of his resurrection. He makes us a light for the nations, so his salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let there be light. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for each person listening. Thank you that, that you give us the life that is truly life because you light our way. Lord, you came and you showed us um, who you are. And Lord, we live in a world that um, doesn't know you and often goes against you. So our prayer is that you would help us to walk right where we're at, in our home lives, in our work lives, in our uh, friend, friends and in our family. Help us to walk in the light. Help us to show love and compassion, grace and truth, life. And Lord, I pray that you would fill your people full and full and make them fully alive. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, well, thanks for joining us today. I'm so glad you did. Uh, we have a uh, Asbury Live that happens every Sunday morning on YouTube at 10 a.m. Look up the Asbury Free Methodist Church channel in Perth. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do. And uh, we would love to see you there as well. Blessings on you. Go in peace.